You pop your eyes in. Uh. You reset your nervous system. Would it be correct in saying that this is the most expensive rehab in the world? I would say that's probably the truth, yeah. You're coming here as an addict, extremely vulnerable. Helps with the circulation. This creates more energy. It's the diagnostic and the treatment. Bioresonance tests, which have no scientific backing. Ah, fuck! I just don't know how you could do it. How are you feeling? I actually felt that the money was killing me. It was very lonely. If you carry on, you will develop a habit. <laughs> Do you know what you're feeling now? Paracelsus is the world's most expensive rehab and it costs, I think, 300 grand. No, not 300 grand. God, how much was it? 300 grand a month. It costs 300 grand a month. There is a luxury apartment, 24-hour living therapist, psychiatric assessment, addiction assessment, brain analysis. All these people around this table will be discussing me. I don't know if they're gonna find that I'm basically broken human being. Growing up in central London, a lot of people work in the media. It's become quite normalized, the drinking and the casual drug taking. Paracelsus is completely different to what I've seen previously. I've tried cognitive behavioral therapy. I did AA for a while, where it's all about group therapy. This is like a one-on-one -on -one therapy session. I'm very keen to get there. Sydney, so nice Welcome to meet to you. Nice to meet you. you. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Now that I'm on my way to spend a free weekend at the world's most expensive rehab, I can find out whether money really can solve all problems. Oh, this is great. I love it. I love it. Do you play piano? No, I can't. This is the therapy room. Ooh. Hi. How are you? You OK? Yeah, I'm good. How are you doing? It's a bit crazy when you arrive. Yeah, it is. Yeah, a bit, bit kind of nerve-wracking. Oh, it's beautiful. How do you feel now? I feel fine. It's obviously a strange setup. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye. He lives in this a penthouse apartment, and he doesn't leave. How are you feeling now? They're hungry. Let's see if Magda prepared a nice juice. Please. Thank you so much. It was really weird walking into a room and having a team of people waiting on me. I kind of just wanted to run and hide. We do, in a way, create a uh, kind of symbolic family. So Magda's like mummy, and I can be a bit like daddy. Mm. Magda can cook. Mission. Mm. Eating with a stranger is awkward enough without them also being paid to analyse you. I've got a charity for saving drowning fish. Huh? After some strange small talk, I was straight into my first therapy session. Start from the beginning. My parents separated when I was about seven years old. I lived with my mum, and then I just remember being very worried at school. I started drinking when I was 13. So you began drinking alcohol at 13? Yeah. I was terrified of drugs for ages. And then I just went a bit madder. So then I wasn't scared of pills suddenly, and then I was like taking it. Like, I wasn't really scared of many drugs. From like 17 to 21, I was just constantly pissed or like on a com I just was delusional. What? I'm just wondering about your relationship with your dad, that's all. I've come to terms with being accepting, but obviously I haven't. Have I? You tell me. I, I, I... Um, I don't know. So you, you were using coke up until last year? I'll still do a bit of coke now and then. Yeah? Does it help you? No, it makes me feel shit. Why'd you do it then? Because if I'm pissed, I'll do a little line. Do you want to stop? Yeah. I find it really hard because it's so normalised amongst everyone. I just think you've got to maybe try to stay away from things that currently don't really help you. Next on my programme is a session of something called biochemical restoration, which uses bioresonance technology. That's Riddell, Sydney. 
This would be to test my intolerances in order to temporarily change my diet. Whoa. So this is there? really not so good. This is the buckwheat. You're allergic. I was holding a rod. My finger was tapped into something. I was very bemused with what was going on at the time. You are allergic against the herring. You are allergic against salmon. I just had some. <laughs> Duck feathers. Similarly with the Metatron. They were scanning my body and then they were finding the bits that weren't right within my body and then downloading some sort of treatment to my body via a computer. If he, I see your lymph node has not enough energy, I can give him energy. What? It's the diagnostic and the treatment. So you just click a button. Computer is creating. There is it's more. So. More, there is something behind. Yeah. It's right. in it, behind. It's in. I had never experienced or heard of anything like these tests. And this is 100% gold, and it helps to quit the allergies. Oh, wow. I mean, I'd just been given a solid gold sticker to heal my previously unknown herring and duck feather allergies. I love herring. When does it start kind of working? Oh, it started immediately. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So far, the main things that set Paracelsus apart from other elite rehabs are the strange body assessments and the 24-7 living therapist, Louis. I wanted to find out more about where these novel approaches came from, so I met with the company's founder. What do you get for that price tag that other places can't provide? Many things. <laughs> So what's the thinking behind the live-in therapist? It's basically something we, we invented. If you have one client at a time, the person cannot stay alone. How do your clients receive that? Initially it can be annoying, but I think all of them very quickly come to really appreciate the role uh, and the person of the live-in therapist. Stuff like bioresonance, how does it work? To be honest, I was quite skeptical initially when, when we started working with it, because to understand the mechanisms uh, is immensely complex and it's not something that you can tie directly back to you know, what's taught in medical school uh, today. We never rely fully on it. We always double check with the labs, but the bioresonance, we can really start immediately with the right treatment applications. I'm just gonna Google a few things around bioresonance tests. Small dessert. Oh, thank you so much. So enjoy. Thank you. Go have a rest. After thank that. you. Bioresonance, electrodermal testing. There is little or no scientific rationale for these methods. I just feel like when you're in a desperate position, as an addict, coming here, you you will take these bioresonance tests and not question them when well, maybe you should. Hello. Oh, Magda. Please, sir. Oh, great. Sir, please. That's your room. This is my room. Mm -hmm. If at any time during the night you, you need to talk, you just come and get me. It's 6.30 a.m. and I'm being taken to the Dolder Grand, which is the off-site spa for the Paracelsus. It's probably the most luxury spa I've ever been to. It would definitely work for the 300 grand a monthers. I mean, you've got everything here. Definitely keeps up a certain standard of living, which I'm sure everyone's used to. I'm not used to hot stone baths. Yeah, I'm not trying to relax. Okay, I don't know if I can relax. Fucking hell! I can't do it! Ah, 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 fuck! 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 Okay, can I come out? Oh, fuck. Oh, I've got frostbite. <laughs> this does feel like the antidote to unhealthy sesh living, but also what you might use to refresh and get right back on it the next day. Uh, I'm hoping Louis's not going to take me aside at breakfast. Um, it's getting quite intense having him. Any five minutes spare you have in between testing. Um, Louis there, wanting to have a chat about how you feel. And quite frankly now, I just don't feel up for chatting. Louis! How are you? I feel fine. So how are you really? What do you want me to say for how I am? I mean, I'm fine, like, there's not much 
more I can. Um. Just in time for the next meal, a dietitian arrives to tell Magda the 1,000 things I now supposedly can't eat. Fish, I know, is struck off it's quite a lot, but there were still a few things left here which would be ideal for you. I don't know if you have big on shellfish. No, oh, not really. In addition, so food-wise, lots of fruits were taken off. A lot of nuts were taken away, but ultimately, variety is key. How does the way you manage your diet help overcoming substance abuse problems? It wouldn't help you overcome a substance abuse, but it would help with the person's mood. Thank you so much. Even though Magda's food is pretty good, my mood is just not improving. No using the phone. Pardon? No using the phone. I felt more intense today. Yeah, I did nearly tell Louis to fuck off. <laughs> I love Louis, but I just don't know how you could do it every day. I just feel a bit claustrophobic and completely surrounded by people I don't really know. You know, you can't go out for walks. I don't like it. Hello. This is intermittent hypoxic therapy. We do cycles of low oxygen. This creates more energy. It's just a lot of really good effects. Would um, it have any effect on like craving? Some people do experience less of an appetite. But what about cravings for alcohol? Cravings for alcohol, I have not heard that. No. I'm beginning to feel skeptical about how any of these treatments and lifestyle changes are really going to help overcome any real issues. Does it help addicts? I wouldn't do cupping for addiction treatments. Then I would do acupuncture. I was like shooting in my back. I didn't know if I was being a massive cynic or whether all of this was actually a bit daft. You pop your eyes in. Yes. Uh. Oh, yes. Now what? You reset your nervous system. Resetting your nervous system? I've never heard that one before. Hurt my eye. But maybe when you're paying this absurd price, you need a parade of novelties to either keep you occupied or feel as though you're getting your money's worth. Give me a fine. You live it's fine. Great. In order to show me just how effective their treatment actually is, Paracelsus have organized for me to meet a former client. Paracelsus, it was for me the most important decision I have made in my life. What were your issues? No, I had mainly alcohol and cocaine. Most of the people I know who have those type of issues, they don't want to be in any group sessions. They concerned about reputation. No one in my life on my circle even noticed that I was in treatment. How much were you spending on your drug habit and drink habit? There was no problem to spend 50,000 in a night or more. People who live this type of lifestyle, they also spend a lot of money on inviting other people. I was really able to party for three days and go to work like nothing happened. Can you describe what your life was like when you're at your lowest point during addiction? The last time I chatted, I had from Cannes to Sardinia. You know, I remember that at some point I was throwing up overboard and people, they were lying there and they were all like messed up and I didn't even remember where they came from. It was very lonely. My life was going too fast to nowhere. I looked at the Mediterranean Sea and uh, there was a beautiful sunrise and I felt like you got to change something. And is that when you came to Paracelsus? Yeah, after that, yes. So I stayed, I think, for two months. And then I came back and used Paracelsus as my support system. And, and how much did you spend in total? It was like 800 to a million, yeah. Can you give us a rough idea of how wealthy you are? Well, I don't know, but I would say it will be enough to stay for the rest of my life at Paracelsus. <laughs> It's easy to see how Paracelsus could become a temporary escape for people whose lives of debauchery have no budgetary limits. People of that power, money can keep them going for a long time. So the rock bottom is when they end up in the emergency room or sometimes in the morgue. It's hard for the average population to, to really have empathy for somebody who has it all 
who can afford everything uh, to actually be allowed to suffer and have problems. At some point, that kind of lifestyle becomes a bit dull. Boredom is a big factor when, uh, when you have a lot of wealth and, uh, and really no purpose. You need a reason to get out of bed in the morning, and that's not just to go to the next party. That purpose uh, doesn't last very long. That really isolates, and, and, and in the end, it's that loneliness and the pain that comes from that loneliness and often also associated boredom that leads to this pain and inner void that then people start to self-medicating. You know, you were seven years old and you probably were fully aware of the tension between your mum and dad. And then the anxiety kicks in. Just letting it all go and drugs and crazy and um, that just made it worse. It never went away. Do you know, do you know what you're feeling now? Quite intense, isn't it? Of course. Yeah, um, it's been a really. I think I think we're, we're talking about your dad. I think it's what's going on. Do you want us to? Do? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if you carry on with that acceptance of it's London and it's part of the scene, yeah. I'm just going to do it. That process of of engaging may increase and then you will develop a habit. Mm. You know, the idea of abstinence is that when you're trying to rewrite neural pathways is, is the way to go. You're giving yourself every opportunity to create new experience. Mm. And it's a new experience which challenges the neuroplasticity, which then creates the change in the brain. The sheer quantity of treatments on offer at Paracelsus can often feel like a way to justify the price tag. But the main focus is therapy, and if it eventually forced me to engage with my issues, it can do the same for the 1%. As much as we love to pile in on rich people, I guess wealth can sometimes be a gilded cage that leads to isolation. But for those of us who can't hire a team of people to make us feel better whenever we want, a church hall and a few chairs are just as good. And there's probably a reason it's unusual for therapists to sit with you for all your meals and refer to themselves as your symbolic dad. I'm excited to get back. I'm excited to have a glass of wine. I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs>